having access to the Google Maps tiles with an Unreal Engine allows you to completely customize your environment and lighting, which is not possible with a simple Google Earth map. Lighting your urban scenes and creating an environment is crucial for illustrating any of your designs or selling story. In this video, I will go through how to easily light your streamed city tiles and customize any part of the world as you like. As you may have guessed, we're back in Japan, but this time in the city of Kyoto. And for those of you who know your temples, we are next to Kyomizodera, one of the most famous temples in Kyoto. And here I have streamed in a part of the city using Cesium and Google Earth tile maps. I did a previous video about this in quite some detail, so please take a look at this first. Otherwise, we'll be going straight into how to light these scenes. If I go here and turn on the view to lit, you'll see that it is completely pitch black as I've removed all the lights. I go back into the unlit mode, so Kisemesh, and we will just add in a post processing volume up here under visual effects so that we can clamp our exposure so we can see a bit better. So I'll just type in exposure down here in the panel and set the metering mode to manual and set something around 40. And then we also need to change the extents and click infinite extent so that it covers the entire scene, not just that little post process volume box there. Next, we can add in the main cesium sun sky. So if we go to window and select cesium, we should have this plugin already installed and hit the cesium sun sky in the tab. Here in the outliner, you'll see we have the cesium sun sky. And if you scroll down, you'll see that you can set the date and the time. Particularly see there's a time zone here, which is the reason why it's completely black because it's set in the wrong time zone. So I know Japan is plus nine. I'll type in nine and we get light. I'll be a bit too bright, but uh, at least we know it's working. To expand the details under Season Sun Sky, you can see that there are three lights underneath this. Directional light, skylight, and the sky atmosphere. You can edit them all individually here. However, a useful tip is if you go to Window and click Environmental Light Mixer, you can see these all side by side, which makes them easy to compare and adjust. See that all three of these lights are called the same thing, Season Sun Sky. However, they all match the lights that you can see here in the details panel. So for the first one, which will be the directional lights, you can see the intensity is very high, hence why everything is blown out. We adjust it down a bit, and you can see that you get immediate effect. If you minimize this and put it side by side, this is a much better way to be tweaking your lights to get the effects that you want. I can slightly adjust this to be lower here. But this way you can go through all the lights and adjust the details as you like. So if we go down to the skylight, you can also adjust the intensity here, which gives it a bit more of the global illumination. You can also add in a HDRI map of the surrounding. And also there's a sky atmosphere. We do that for now, although this will affect elements such as the fog. Now speaking of environmental effects, you can add them all from here in the environmental light mixer as well. So at the top, here you can click Hide Fog and it will drop it into your scene straight away. So it won't take any effect as you need to adjust the position of the Hide Fog in the details, which I'll go through in a bit. Also, if you expand the light mixer, you can also add in a volumetric cloud there. So you can see that now some fluffy clouds appeared in the skies. But this is also a basic cloud system that you can adjust parameters such as the heights so you can scroll down here in the light mixer, continue adjusting parameters. For example, for the high fog, you can change the fog density, which you can think of as the fog layer's thickness. So here at 2, it is very shrouded, so a factor of 0 0.2 is better. You adjust other settings such as the height fall off, which controls how the density increases as the height decreases. And then there's the start distance and the fog cutoff distance which affects where the fog will start and where the fog will end. 
Now, these are the five main elements within the light mixer that I'd recommend to add to play around with. They all affect each other, so it's good to see how one change affects the other interactively. So also, the main lights you would have here is the directional light, which will be changing the sun angle. This can be adjusted through the time and date, as shown previously in the cesium sun sky. Also, another nifty trick is if you hold Ctrl and L, you can change the direction interactively. So it can be quite easy to lose control of this. So I would recommend either moving your mouse up and down or left and right to have greater control of this. Otherwise, just go over to your cesium sun sky and outliner and you can adjust the time to have a more specific and accurate result. With the main elements in, you can continue adjusting parameters for the time or the cloud heights to see how the effects work together. So I've just sped through that here. I'll give another useful tip I found when adjusting the height fog. As you can see, when you drop in the height fog, it doesn't seem to really affect your scene much when adjusting parameters. Now that could be because the height fog factor is dropped underneath your train. So an easy way to relocate this is to go and make a shape and have just a simple cube and drop it into the center of your seat. This way, if you go to location of the cube and you can copy this transform, and then you can go over to the height fog actor and paste in this location. And that way, the fog center is located exactly in the middle of your seat and you have much better control over this. So now if you change the distance or the starting and finishing of the fog, you get a much better feedback. And now you can see how the atmosphere and the fog and the sunlight are all, all affecting and working together. To enhance these effects, you can also do this through the post-process volume. So it's good to do this to the lens flare and to the blue. But first, if you go to the blue, you can adjust the method from standard to convolution, give it a nicer shape and adjust the intensity here. In the same way, you can then go to the lens flare effect and change the intensity here for that. So the bloom essentially makes it glint from the bright light source, while the lens flare creates all these artifacts or lights coming out. You see here. To you happy with your setup, you can create a camera, save out the view. So if you go to the burger menu on the top left, go create camera here and click on Sin Camera Actor. And then you have the view saved out. If you go up to where it says Perspective, you can then change your view to be the Sin Camera Actor, and you can see clearly the resolution and the output. You can continue adjusting parameters actually within the camera, but that'll be beyond the scope of this video. So I'll just show you a final quick way how to then take a screenshot. If you go back to the burger menu, you can go down to the bottom that says high resolution screenshot. You can adjust the size multiplier slightly. Don't do it too high as you'll say it crashes. And then you can just quickly press capture. Of course, you'd want to have more higher resolution renders and animations. So I'll be doing a follow-up video on how to animate the C. So be sure to take a look if you found this useful and let me know if there's any other tutorials that you would like to do based on CZM and the Unreal Engine. So thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next video.